Hey, Walking Dead fans. This is going to be a video about Morgan. I will go over his story just briefly hitting on parts here and there to kind of outline his story up to Fear the Walking Dead Season 5 and touch on the timeline, mainly uh, the fact that Fear the Walking Dead Season 5 will be at least 6 to 6.5 years behind where The Walking Dead is right now. I definitely don't think there's going to be any whisperer story at all in Fear the Walking Dead. And Dwight shows up in Fear the Walking Dead Season 5. It will be coming to TV soon, so as you're watching that, know that they are at least six years behind, or six and a half years behind, The Walking Dead story. I've been discussing this a little bit in the comments here and there, and it's been requested a, kind of like a question on what is Morgan's timeline and where is he at right now? In the show, Morgan is from Macon, Georgia. And we've seen in different little parts and pieces of the show in the beginning they had a radio broadcast that said, come to Atlanta, there's a safe zone, uh, you'll have military protection, there's food there, and they were trying to kind of get people to go to Atlanta. If you remember, Shane grabbed Lori and Carl, they were headed in that direction, that's where they met up with Carol. If you remember on that backed up interstate, they were jammed in a traffic jam. Morgan and his wife, Jenny, and his son, Dwayne, they were going to Atlanta as well from Macon, Georgia. But along the way, Jenny, the wife, she got bit and died. And this was very, very traumatic for Morgan and Dwayne as well. And that kind of stopped them in their tracks. And they stopped around where Rick's from. And they happened to go into a house. I think it was the Drakes or something like that. I forget their name. but um, And they kind of just held up in this house. Because Morgan, I guess, was going to try to put down his wife. And he never could. But then Rick shows up. Of course, he's Rick went to his house to look for Lori and Carl, and he saw all the drawers empty and the photo albums gone and stuff, and he comes back out, and he kind of just sits on the steps. That's where Dwayne hits him with that shovel. Daddy, I got this son bitch. I'm going to smack him dead. And really, if you think about it, Rick might not have made it if it wasn't for Morgan. Even sitting there on the steps, he was waving to this walker that was coming down the street thinking it was just a dude. And, you know, just right there, that walker could have just walked on over, bit Rick, ate him, whatever, you know. But Morgan, of course, put a bullet in that one's head, and they saved Rick. And not only nursed him back to health, but let him know about what the hell's going on in the world. But as far as Morgan's timeline, we know that Rick helped him out. Said, here's a gun, here's a rifle, here's some bullets. You should join me, come with me. I'm going to go get my wife and kid. You come on down toward Atlanta because Morgan said he would. Let me take care of the wife thing, uh, teach my kid how to shoot the gun and everything. When I feel he's able to protect himself better out there in the world, we'll head on down that way. But of course, Morgan never did because of what happened. But after Rick leaves and Morgan stays, Morgan tries to kill his wife again and just can't do it. And this begins uh, his wife dying and him not being a able to kill her. You could call it PTSD, there was a lot of trauma, just all the stuff going on where some of the other people, other characters in the Walking Dead story can handle that stuff. Morgan just can't seem to handle the trauma. There's something going on in his brain, PTSD type stuff happening, and we're going to see that pretty much all the way through to Fear the Walking Dead. But of course, Morgan returns in season three. Rick, Michelle, and Carl go back to the town that they're Rick and Carl's from, and they find Morgan holed up, of course. And before I get to that, though, let's go over what happened between during season two when we don't see Morgan, between when Rick left him and when Rick finds him all crazy, holed up in that building with all those walker traps everywhere. What happened in between? So Morgan and Dwayne stay around King County for a long time. And they just clear stores, you know, getting uh, merchandise and food and different things like that that they need. They go around scavenging and scouting. And on one of those little outings, it said Morgan went down, I think, into a cellar or basement area and left Dwayne up at the top of the steps. And his own, like I said before, Morgan was not able to put his wife down. His own wife, Walker, wife, bit Dwayne. And... Morgan said he came back up to the top of the steps and all he could see is red, you know, just the, her chomping down on Dwayne and it was just all over and he finally had to put him down. She was standing there right in front of him and then she was just, just on him and 
I see red. And we're not exactly sure if he put Dwayne down. There's some rumors that Dwayne may be a walker out there. And some people th say that Morgan's just crazy and that's not how it happened and Dwayne's still alive. But I definitely don't think that. I do think the mom bit the son. Uh, they're both dead now. And that just helped drive Morgan a little more into his mental illness that we see throughout the show. So then jump to season three and we see Morgan hold up in that building and writings all over the wall and just a lot of crazy stuff going on. But his son has died. His wife's gone. He's kind of went crazy a little bit. And as Rick talks to him, he finally recognizes Rick. And one thing I'd like to point out right here, there's one moment in this part where he says, I see people wearing dead people's faces. And, you know, since that happened, everybody thinks that's a reference to the whispers. And I personally don't think it is a reference to the whispers. I think that's just part of Morgan's mental issues that he's having at the time. But that's just me, and that's my theory on that little moment of what he said right there. So Morgan has definitely went off the deep end, and he's in this phase of just killing everything. All the walkers, that's kind of his mission at this moment in time. And he even kills uh, survivors. He's just off the deep end for sure, and it's... That happens all the way up to when he meets the Cheesemaker or Eastman. But we don't actually learn about that until Season 6, Episode 4. But Morgan returns in Season 5 when we see him walking down the railroad tracks and he sees the sanctuary sign that Rick uh, changed. And then he goes off through the woods searching for Rick, still on that path searching for Rick. And it's along this path where we see him meet the wolves and not kill them and also save Daryl and Aaron and that's what leads him to Alexandria of course all of this takes the entire length of season 5 and by episode 16 of season 5 the finale Morgan finally with Aaron and Daryl reaches Alexandria and meets Rick again for the first time in a long time right as he shoots Pete the guy that had been beating his wife shoots Pete in the head so as we go into season 6 Morgan still at Alexandria the whole walkers in the quarry thing where they tried to lead them out and take them down the road. And, and of course, Morgan was on his cheesemaker philosophy and didn't want to kill any of the wolves, which actually w was causing a problem. His philosophy of all life is precious, that's a good philosophy. I mean, it's true. All life is precious. We only got this one life and we should really use it to its fullest and live it to its fullest. But, you know... There's a certain uh, line you draw, I think. But then Morgan goes all through season seven and, of course, season eight. All of that's all-out war, killing the saviors and all of that. And Morgan has a big, you know, going back and forth about all of that. Carol went through some of the stuff Morgan was going through. She went to live in that little house because she didn't want to kill anymore. So there's a lot of that going on, uh, the thought process and the psychology of it. But Morgan actually went back to killing again. So he went from killing everything to all life is precious to killing everything again all the way up to the end of pretty much season eight and all out war. By the time he goes to fear the walking dead, he's he's on that all life is precious thing again. But by the end of season eight, Morgan is kind of fed up with everything and he goes and lives at the junkyard for a little while. If you remember, and Rick comes to see him and, and Jadis and some different people. But Morgan's like, just leave me alone, leave me alone. And they don't seem to want to leave him alone. So he leaves. He actually, he says he runs a lot of the way, runs and walks his way to Texas. And that's where he enters the Fear the Walking Dead story in Fear the Walking Dead Season 4. But here's where the actual talking about the timeline comes in. I wanted to give that description of Morgan's story briefly kind of up to this point, up to the end of Season 8 and going into Fear the Walking Dead. Because at the end of Season 8, it took him just a few months to get to Texas. Season 4 of Fear the Walking Dead only lasted several months. And now going from Season 4 of Fear the Walking Dead to Season 5, there's only been two or three months in between. But what has happened with the Walking Dead story? Well, right after Morgan leaves, and Dwight leaves about that same time, actually before Morgan, Daryl banishes Dwight and says, if you ever come back, I'll kill you if I ever see you around here. So I'm thinking Dwight goes and looks for Sherry. And Sherry mentioned their honeymoon spot or something like that, maybe in a note. Maybe that was down in uh, Texas because 
Dwight's going to be in Fear the Walking Dead Season 5. So Dwight and Morgan's timeline is the same, of course. They're in the same moment. But The Walking Dead, after Dwight left, after Morgan left, jumped a year and a half. And that's where we get the Rick trying to have all the communities work together and build the bridge and that kind of thing. And then, of course, after Rick leaves the show, we get a six-year time jump. So that's seven and a half years that The Walking Dead show has jumped time where Fear the Walking Dead has been under a year, several months, I would say, under a year or at least around a year time span that has passed. So Fear the Walking Dead at season five, start of season five, is six to 6.5 years at least behind The Walking Dead. So Dwight and Morgan at this point of the story of Fear the Walking Dead is behind The Walking Dead. But that's it for this video. Just some Morgan talk. So we can discuss anything, Morgan, in the comments below. The timeline, anything he's done through his story, if you want, in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more dead stuff.